would like to call the meeting to order. If you would stand for a moment of silence, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Um, also, uh, a little bit later on the agenda, we're going to be honoring Rusty Weber. Um, Rusty's mother, the matriarch of the Weber family, passed away recently, Pat, and please remember her and the Weber family in your moment of silence. Okay, welcome everyone here tonight. Welcome everyone who's watching at home. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Trustee DeVore. Present. Trustee Gutt. Present. Trustee Kazam. Trustee Goff. Trustee Wigginton. Present. Trustee Weisenberg. Present. Okay, a few absent, a couple absent, but we do have a quorum. Next, we would be at a proclamation. Oh, Madam Clerk, I'm sorry, I'm ahead of myself. Please call the roll before we do that. We just called roll, Mayor. That we did. All yeah. right, I'm confused. Wait. That's all right. <laughs> it don't get any better. Got everyone up here? Feel free to take pictures. Okay, this is a proclamation in honor of Rusty Weber. Whereas, Rusty Weber has devoted more than a quarter century of unflagging service to the Peoria Heights Fire Department. Whereas, Rusty Weber pretty much grew up at the fire department as a legacy member with his father and mother, Carl and Pat Weber, serving as longtime volunteers and other family members, including a brother and two children, also taking their turns. Whereas Rusty Weber has occupied every rank at the fire department up to and including assistant chief. Whereas Rusty Weber has been the department's go-to guy regarding its fire prevention efforts, providing safety education at local schools and businesses as, and making this community more protected as a result. Whereas Rusty Weber has been a model EMT who has responded to thousands of emergency medical calls over the years whereas Rusty Weber has a well-deserved reputation for his great bedside manner with a special way of calming people on what can be done on their worst days of their, on one of the worst days of their lives. Whereas Rusty Weber is renowned for his absolute reliability and consistency under pressure, showing up when needed despite the other demands of his time, while his fellow firefighters never had to worry when he was at the controls of a fire engine. Whereas Peoria Heights loss is others gain as Rusty can now devote his attention to his full-time job in Barton, Bartonville as a police and fire dispatcher, a position he once occupied in the Heights and to his wife Dana and family. Whereas Rusty was a fixture at the fire department, if ever there was, we the people of Peoria Heights and the village board hereby recognize the enormous contribution to Peoria Heights of this kind and community-minded man and hereby proclaim the Webbers the first family of Peoria Heights Fire Department. Sincerely, we thank you for your service. Um, I'm, not, I'm speechless. <laughs> this, uh, thanks for the privilege and the opportunity to serve the people of Peoria Heights. Thank you. Next, we will be at comments from the audience. If anyone here tonight would like to address the board, please come forward to the podium and give your name and address and try and keep your remarks under five minutes. Welcome. Good evening. My name is Diana Close. I reside at 1815 East Terrace View Lane. 
um, been a resident of the uh, Heights for a while. Um, I'm here kind of following up on an email that I had sent. I don't know if everybody got it or not. And just for the record, I'm not here to make anybody look bad. I'm not here. I look up to Chief Thompson. I always have. You taught my fire class. Um, so that's not what this is about. This is not about bashing somebody. This is about expressing my concerns in the direction that the fire department's going in regard to a full-time position and the downgrading of the fire department from EMT level to EMR level. Um, so I know there, I've heard through the grapevine, so I don't have confirmation, but I've heard that there has been talk about what's been going on. Um, I haven't heard from anybody until uh, Brandon got a hold of me yesterday, finally. Um, and I do appreciate you finally getting a hold of me. Um, so a few weeks ago, I sent out the email expressing my concerns. Um, and I'd like to kind of further explain if I can. It's my understanding that our fire department has been down downgraded to the emergency medical responder status. And I kind of would like to know why, what happened. I've been in EMS and the fire department, involved with the EMS and fire department for over 30 years. I was part of the Peoria Heights Fire Department and the ambulance service when we became a full-time paramedic transporting ambulance service for the citizens of the Heights. And then it was over. I'd like to think that my experience, knowledge, and training allow me to express these concerns that I have. As a taxpayer, a resident of Peoria Heights, I am concerned that my family, myself, and other residents aren't getting the same care we once were provided. The residents thought they were getting the same service when AMT took over, with flyers that promised a three to five minute response time to emergency calls. But then the fire department dropped down to the EMT level also. The response times from AMT, con AMT continue to vary. Sometimes they're very quick, other times they are very, very delayed. Now, I find out that the fire department has dropped down to the EMR status, so I'm watching this decline happen. It seems, and I could please correct me if I'm wrong, that we dropped down to the EMR status before Mike Wu ever stopped. That's a concern to me. Why did that happen? I'm curious why. Why did we drop down? Was it money? Was it the lack of staffing? I know that the EMS office is really good about giving a lot of leeway when you need it or you need some time. I've heard through the grapevine things about the difference between EMT and an EMR. The difference is brain and heart cells. Glucagon versus glutose, gel, and oxygen. Nitro in a 12 lead versus oxygen and aspirin. So I can assume that it was money or the lack of staffing that caused the service to be downgraded. But if we are, if we are now only staffing EMR firefighters, then this brings up another concern for only hiring one full-time staffer if you are unable to maintain the EMT status for our fire department. The volunteer fire departments are going with part-time paid duty crews of two to four people. And they're requiring firefighter two, or the equivalent, and at least an EMT license. They are running more EMS than fire calls and usually still have a volunteer fire chief and a volunteer deputy chief. I was under the impression that the last year and a half was about finding a fix for our dwindling fire department, knowing that Mike Wu would not be around forever. The talks of a duty crew came up and Peoria fire. But first the paid chief and deputy chief were to try and obtain more volunteers. I know I have talked to, to you many times about coming back. It was, it's been a long, I don't know how much time I have, but it's been a long process for me to swallow down some pride, to get over my issues, and want to be of service again. And I wanted to help out the residents down below the hill, because I know that's where the help was needed. And we've talked about it. And I've talked to other firefighters and said, yeah, you know, I'd like to help out. I might be to that point but I want to know what's going on. And I want to know that things that are happening are the correct way and not misleading. And I think the, the residents deserve to know answers to why 
it is continuing to go downhill on the EMS side. Well, I'll answer a, a few of those questions, Diana. It's good to see you again. You too. Before I turn it over to Chief Thompson. Uh, first of all, as far as, as you know, we rely on uh, AMT for our ambulance service, and we are very happy with their service. And if I do have any issues with response time or any uh, uh, efficiencies that you know there's a, obviously a chain of command that I'll reach out to them and let them know that but I will tell you that we've been very happy with their service um, as far as the grapevine and all that stuff I can't attest to what you're hearing I can't um, but I think that over the last couple of years this this administration uh, has been faced with a couple different options um, I know that uh, since Mike Wu's retirement, we're faced with another option, and they just decided that uh, this was the way that we were going to move forward. So that's what we're doing, and I'll give an update on that a little bit later. But, um, but our EMS service uh, with AMT is outstanding. We've been very happy with that since its inception. So uh, I don't know. Well, I've never heard that, and, I, and I don't, people are pretty quick to call me if they have issues. So... Um, before I get into any of the other, um, I'll turn this over to Chief Thompson and let him make a couple comments as far as the downgraded service from the fire department. Well, let me, let me first say, though, uh, thank you for being here tonight. And you ask a lot of good questions, and we're going to get you answers. Um, in my opinion, most of the conversation has been around our ability to um, answer and deal with fire calls, not so much the EMS. So you, you ask some questions that I don't think the board has really delved into. It's been most mostly getting volunteer firefighters. So, um, Chief, go ahead. So, the, as far as I know, since I've been on the department since uh, February of 20, we've always been EMR. We just had a BLS upgrade. So, it, it's always been listed as an EMR service. Okay. Did we get rid of the, did you get rid of the BLS upgrade? Yes, or? we got rid of the BLS upgrade. And why was that? Because we weren't using any of the drugs and it was becoming more of a cost to, to keep up on the drugs the entire time. And we only had three EMTs. And with Mike leaving, we're down to just two. Okay. So they weren't, you know, with just two, they're not going on the call, so we couldn't do that. We couldn't continue the service. Did, can I ask, did, did you all receive the email? I know. Brandon. I did not, and actually I was given a copy, and we had to, you had my email down. I was on the chain, but we actually checked with Pearl, who does our technology work, so it, mine bounced back, but I would like to follow up with you on a, on a personal meeting if we could do so, um, because you raised some questions that, that are really, frankly, new, new to us on the EMS side. So. And you did and not Mike. include me on the email. So. No, I honestly figured you right. would probably get it. Right. Oh, I, I was having some computer issues with that. Right. Right. Yeah. So, but and I know Brandon Mine said his went to spam. spam. It was so. like a weird Outlook address. It was like zero zero underscore nine seven two. It was really weird and uh, ended up in my spam. I don't know mm -hmm. why. Well, and you're the tech guy, but that's I believe what Pearl's answer was that the email that originated from was somewhat unusual. It was, it was really odd looking. I, and then it had your and then it had your email address kind of in parentheses, but it wasn't actually the address it came from. It was I don't I can't explain it, but it wasn't my spam. So when I saw I know that, that message, I, I went looking for it. But and we apologize. We can talk about that. The important that. thing is you're here tonight, and um, you know, like I said, I'm not here to make enemies. I'm just I'm here as a concerned citizen and an educated citizen when it comes to this thing. It will be I will be a patient advocate to the day I die. Doesn't matter where I'm at. That's going to be an ongoing thing. I just rem I just know that when there's 80 over 80 percent of the calls are EMS, and less than 20 are fire, and I I get it. We have the ambulance service when they're here, but there's a time frame in there that I talk about the heart cells and the brain cells and the treatment that needs to be done now, and I can sit down there. I can see the traffic on 29. I can see the ambulance. I can see the fire trucks. I know the difference in the timing, but so anyway. I've been over my five well, I th minutes, well, I think that's what we have in common is that we're 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 after the same fix and the goal, and I think that's part of the recruiting is issue that we've been faced. So I think we're all talking about the same issue, um, you know, because I think having th those type of qualified personnel will help Chief Thompson's cause as well. So I think we're after the same solution. It's just getting the right people that have you know that type of training that hold that kind of certificate. Um, uh, the other thing I'll say is that AMT, I agree with Chief, uh, they're there 
probably on 90% of the calls before we are right now. I mean, recently, I have, we haven't had, I mean, it's been probably a year since we have any trouble with uh, getting any response out of them, you know, having a trouble with that. But I would say at least 90% of the time they're there before we are. Right but now, currently. This conversation that, that you know we're, we're in came up probably a couple of years ago um, when the board was made aware that it was just really difficult to get people to show up for any calls in the daytime. And um, uh, Chief Walters was running nearly all the calls back then. And so when, when he retired, uh, we were in somewhat of a predicament. And based on mainly his recommendation, um, to hire a full-time chief, which we did, and uh, uh, not only did we all agree, but uh, it was the recommendation of Chief Walters that we hire Chief Thompson, and then we decided to um, uh, give a stipend to um, Assistant Chief Wu. So the board, you know, contributed resources to, to both of these salaries and thought that we had found a, a pretty good solution, but then other people who were answering calls when needed in the daytime are no longer available. So that's that's where we find ourselves is just very hard to get volunteers paid or unpaid um, for a stipend. So the recommendation was made to look at hiring a full-time person. So there's some differences of, of opinion around the board about you know whether one's enough or we need more. Um, you know, um, but we're still you know we're. We're moving forward the best we can, and you being here tonight um, shed some light on other areas that we we really never considered. Well, this is the this is the EMS side. I still prefer. I would prefer to see two paid staff. Well, I know that's. But I'm of I'm, that like mine too, but um, you know, I guess some some people want to walk before we run, but I. Um, I think a couple of what are, what is really needed. So. All right. Thank you very much for your time. Um, please, Thanks, please come back, and I'm going to invite you to come up talk to uh, Dustin and I and Chief Thompson if he's available, um, because we'd like to hear more. But uh, come back to the board meeting, and uh, we, we need we need the community involved. And you being here tonight says a lot, so I appreciate that. Absolutely, I'm not like I said, I'm not here to make enemies. I'm here to get this figured well, out. Get, we're used to a little out. of everything. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. Thank you very much for your time. Right, no, thank, thank you. you. All right, public comments still open. Anyone else here to address the board? Hi, Julie. Nice bright yellow sweater. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I am here on behalf of the Peoria Heights Farmers Market. Um, you probably have seen the posters all over the Heights. And I'm just, um, we're midway through our market season. And I really wanted to come tonight and say a, just a huge gratitude thank you um, from so many people, from the village, from Dustin, from um, City Works, the street guys. Uh, I mean, you'll never believe it. It's like everybody. It's the shop fronts have our posters in the window. The restaurants are handing out our flyers. I mean, it's just the businesses stop by, and it, everyone's so supportive. And it's it's really nice when you're trying to start something up in our very first year. So um, I'll hand these out. And that's just... Um, a sample of the flyer that you might see floating around. The um, Peoria Heights Farmer's Market is every Thursday, 3 to 7. It is, um, the hardest part about it is describing exactly where it is because it is behind the PAPS building. So if people are intimate with you know, the village, everybody knows that. If I give them an address, they see a building. So we are saying it is behind the Paps building and the big grassy lot. And that's a huge thank you also for the KDB group, for the parking lot, for the Williams Brothers construction, for the grass, which was a game changer. And that's it. So I just really want to take thank you for allowing things like this to start. I don't know if other communities, if it's difficult to get things started, but in the village I can attest that if there's something you'd like to bring and you can make it happen, it's just, you know, I guess if it's sound, it's good for the community, it can happen. So that's good. And while I'm at it, since you all um, meet, I don't know when your next meeting is, um, 
our next farmer's market is this Thursday, August 4th, but also August 11th, the next Thursday, is actually landing right in National Farmer's Market Week. So in the entire nation, um, farmer's markets tend to play up that day, and I'm going to try to do some extra things um, with the library, St. Thomas Food Pantry. I'm going to be meeting with them tomorrow. Maybe they'll be doing a can drive. We uh, will have some special things for people to do, like scavenger hunt, and I'll have prize and um, things like that. And then this morning, I was, lo and behold, talking with Faber's uh, Produce on Route 26, Larry Faber's farm. He does melons and watermelons, and he and Jody want to do a watermelon eating contest. <laughs> so, the, so there's a lot more coming, but I just really um, wanted to say thank you for this opportunity and for all the support. It's been wonderful. Thanks for doing it, Julie. And it's a wonderful way to meet neighbors. Uh, you know, see a lot of people up there on Thursdays. And also, for those of us who are experiencing sticker shock at the grocery store, it's a great way to pick up some affordable food. Uh, I think last week there was a lot of sweet corn and green beans and potatoes, so. Um, well, I'd, I'd love to give maybe a shout out to the farmers because I know I'm calling it a farmer's market. We have farmers and fresh produce. We have handmade things. We have drinks booths. We have food trucks. Um, the farmers that we have are small, independent farmers. And I mean, they're the hardest working people I think I know. They're, and you're right, the sweet corn's in, and it's great. Another unique farming booth that we have is actually a community garden in south of Peoria. And it's called Budded Mata. And it's really amazing. I mean, these are community people that are selling their produce. So uh, it's just good, good things happen. Thank you very much. Thanks. And Mayor, that, yes. uh, I don't know if I can pronounce it right, but that Buddha Mata is actually worked on by one of Mary Foster's uh, children, Ryan Foster. He's, he's big in that. Um, I, saw I, th the I think Foster's he may have started it. I don't, I'm not sure. I don't know if he started it. But he's. I wouldn't be surprised if he did. Yeah, he's extremely active in it. Yeah. So that makes. I, I saw them up there last week. I didn't get a chance to go over and say hi to them, but that makes sense. Thanks for bringing that yep. up. But another good reason to go over. We're still at public comment. Anyone else like to address the board? Going once, going twice. Public comments closed. Any old business come before the board? Hearing none, let's get right into new business. First, a uh, couple of items under public works. Um, so I'd ask, since in the absence of Trustee Goff, if I could get one of you to agree to make these motions, I'd appreciate it. Oh. We, thank you. Uh, so first, we're at approval of the Lake Street Water Main replacement bid to Hare Construction Incorporated in the amount of $177,322. Trustee Weisenberg. I move to approve the water main replacement on Lake Street for in the amount of one hundred and seventy-seven thousand dollars and three hundred twenty-two. Thank you. In a second. In a second. Okay, uh, Chris, you going to take this, please? Sure. Yeah. <clears throat> no problem. This is the uh, the water main that feeds to the golf course that's been discussed. Hair came in a little bit, and just so happens they were the same business that tried the repair, um, which unfortunately didn't work. Um, but good company to go with they do good work and it's it's actually a pretty pretty fair price i think for what I also want to point out when we first discussed this, we were we were expecting around a three hundred thousand dollar bill for this, so we were presently surprised with this bid. So it was a right. Yeah. Any questions? Discussion? Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Trustee Devore. Aye. Trustee Gat. Aye. Trustee Wigginton. Aye. Trustee Weisenberg. Aye. Right. Next is approval of the Centennial Building Aggregate Concrete Sidewalk Replacement in the amount of $10,000. I'd ask for a motion to approve. So moved. May I have a second? Second. All right. Uh, Superintendent Chandler? Sure. This is uh, right over here at Centennial Building. There are two pretty good sized chunks of the sidewalk area that need to be replaced. They're heaved up from a big tree that's been growing there for a long time and they've been heaped up for a while and it's just time to replace them. The reason it is a little pricey is it is aggregate 
concrete. It's not just regular. So there's a special process to get that same look. And obviously we want to continue the same look that we have over there. And uh, that's, that's about it. Well, what does aggregate well, concrete mean? It's, it has that rock look instead oh, okay. of it just looking like a regular driveway. It's got the rock. It, 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 a rustic? It just, yeah, it has just a, it looks like rocks instead of concrete. Okay. Uh, it's a special process. Superintendent Chandler, is that tree still there? The tree is still there, yes. Are we going to run into the same issue again and again? Well, I would say that that sidewalk's been there for, you know, 50 years or more. I don't know. Okay. Um, I, I would guess that maybe eventually many, so, many so years. So the roots are pushing this, or bowing this have, sidewalk yeah, up? heaved it up, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And what's the depth? What are we going to go on the concrete? These will just be like a, a four inch, four inches deep. And they are big, they're big areas. They're like 10 by 20, 10, two like 10 by 20 spots. So you don't, you don't think we're gonna have the same issue? Not in the near future, no. It would be off in the distant future. Yeah. Okay. Anyone else? Madam Clerk? Trustee DeVore? Aye. Trustee Gatt? Aye. Trustee Wigginton? Aye. Trustee Weisenberg? Aye. All right, that passes. Anything else under Public Works? Um, I would just like to mention we did have a major water main break at Lake and Boulevard. It took us a, a few days to get it all straightened out. Um, we were able to insert two valves in that area that we needed uh, drastically, and it's all opened back up. And you know, obviously, we apologize for any inconvenience to anyone. We tried to get it done as soon as we could. That's another aging infrastructure <coughs> issue. Yes, it is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if you and I have talked about, it, if you give a quick update, you're going to spruce up a little around the Centennial. <coughs> yeah, the Centennial Park. That. We're going to do a little sprucing up over there as well, just to go along with the con the aggregate concrete situation. All right. Any questions for Superintendent Chandler? The uh, the Lake St Street uh, water main replacement was that one of the water mains that was like a hundred years old. Isn't there one in that area that's like... It's like 1930. Yeah. Okay. And it did not, just to explain about the valve, there was, no, there was no water valve from Boulevard to Prospect. Wow. On that, now there is one anyway, so we can isolate it. Right. We, we eventually need to try and put more in there. It's, it's just such a long run. You know, there's a right. lot of houses that if there's a problem, which unfortunately we ran into, you issue a boil order and it affects more people right because there's not as many valves placed in it okay so yeah i thought that was one that we discussed before that was one of the oldest is it? yeah it's yeah. yes yeah well i also want to say to supervisor chandler uh that since our last meeting uh, he's been uh i've seen him and his crew out pretty much uh pretty much every day uh working on you know, we mentioned this one side of lake. I think you were on the other side of lake uh, as were. well. Uh, I was talking to your crew till about midnight uh, on a Friday night. Uh, yes. So I know that uh, they put in a lot of time and got back right out there uh, the following day. So uh, kudos to your team, uh, Supervisor Chandler, and uh, all the all the guys on the crew. Thank you for the kind words. Appreciate. It. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, let's move on to building and grounds. Uh, Trustee Get, you've got two items here. The first is approval of fire station masonry repair to Mid Illinois companies in the amount of twelve thousand seven hundred dollars. I'd ask for a motion to approve. So moved. A second, please. Second. All right, Trustee Get. Okay, this is. Uh, bear with me here. Help me out, Chief, if I've got this wrong. The overhead door on the fire station was. The lintel that would hold it in place, it was crumbling in bad shape. And they're going to take it apart, or they did take it apart, and they re and they salvaged what they could with the stone and they put it back together and uh, installed new flashing where necessary. Uh, the, the total is $12,700. Did you want to add anything to that, Chief? Or? I, I, think that's a, I think that's a different project, uh, Trustee Get. It's, it's, I believe it's the correct project. It just has not taken place yet. No, no, it hasn't taken place right. yet. <laughs> right. Okay. This now, is right here on the uh, west wall here. There's a steel plate. Right. Mayor, you pointed it I'll out. I'll do out there one day, so we got to do something Yes, about this. yes. 
the bid has finally come back. Right. And it, there's just a big major steel plate that holds up that uh, rock above the door. And it, it definitely needs to be repaired. It's a structural issue with the building. Okay. Questions? No. Well, I appreciate uh, Trustee Get and the buildings and grounds um, side of really, this is, I know you, you've put a lot of time and effort into looking at these buildings, Trustee Get, and making sure that um, not only this fire station above the hill, but the one below the hill have gotten the attention uh, that's been needed. So I appreciate it. Down, down below was really bad, but. Well, and I, I think this, this board has, has put some money toward that. And I, right. I really appreciate you and the board, uh, you know, addressing the, um, the needs of the buildings. Uh, so thank you. And thank you, Trustee Gatt. Okay. Uh, so we need, we need to vote. I got two other proposals. Are we going to just well, let's, uh, Yeah, individual? let's get this one out of the way. So any other questions on this? Madam Clerk? Trustee DeVore? Aye. Trustee Gatt? Aye. Trustee Wigginton. Aye. Trustee Weisenberg. Aye. All right, that passes. So next, uh, there are several improvements in Tower Park that we need to address. So Trustee Gett, go ahead and please take a vote. I vote. make a motion to approve repair of the main pavilion and restroom building and painting. That's just a dis discussion tonight, Trustee Gett. All these are under for just discussion. Okay, that's fine, because I got the other one from West for uh, Anyhow, it needs to be done. It's we we had I had turned up numbers in on this last year. I'm sure the prices went up. It's on the main pavilion. Uh, was I supposed to make a motion to discuss this first? No, we're just uh, making the board aware of what needs to be done okay. and getting some direction. And then there is the uh, sign marquee on Prospect that. Uh, well, that's it's been in bad shape for a few years, and this is uh, essentially thirty-eight fifty, three thousand eight hundred fifty, to uh, I don't know where it is. frame it up, right? Not just a because it's pretty expensive to replace that, correct? Correct. <clears throat> and then the other thing is uh, where is it? The uh, on the observation tower, the flat roof goes around uh, by the uh, ticket office and everything. Last year it was it needed to be fixed. It, I got uh, an estimate on that. Uh, Superintendent Chandler got a new one. It's gone up, of course. But there, there's exposed wire over there. There's boards that need to be replaced. <clears throat> there's rubber roofing that needs to be replaced. Price is sixty-three thousand three hundred eleven dollars. That's not. We got to find it somehow, because that is very essential for safety. I mean, that's dangerous. I went over there this morning and looked again. And <clears throat> you can see the lights and the wires. I mean, it, it, there's access to it if you want to go through the bother of grabbing the ladder or grabbing the stick and some kid yanking on it. But we need to discuss this and see about uh, getting it fixed. I know. Part can be covered up with plywood, but there's another part that's tongue groove that's going to have to be mashed and filled in. But uh, these are very important. They're providing a uh, hazard for the people of Peoria Heights, and we need to somehow. Uh, Chief Sutton was saying that uh, BDD might cover some of this cosmetic work. Yeah, some of the cosmetic work. Uh TIF and BDD uh, eligible expenses uh, that we can look at. Um, other than the observation deck, everything else is cosmetic in front of you, but we've been doing a lot of talking about sprucing it up for the, I'm not sure the word you use, Trustee nah, Whittington, I'm not as far repeat as it. the celebration. <laughs> so I think I wanted to get everything in front of you, so I asked Trustee Get Superintendent uh, Chandler to get me some quotes for everything um, and what it also includes painting the pavilion uh, upgrading the sign as far as the glass painting the sign out here and also the big one uh, and this is a timing issue because since we had to crack the concrete for the leak it's it's a perfect timing to look to see if we want to add lights to the tower or to the uh, fountain here that's what that large cost is in your packet so 
Um, that's an option if that's what we want to do. Obviously, it would save money on dye. It's something it would save a lot of manpower hours from Superintendent Chandler and his his group. Um, it could be done remotely. There's a lot of different options we could do if we added the lights. Um, but again, it isn't cheap. But that's it's cheaper now since it's open. Since they had to crack it, and we have all the electronics exposed. So I thought it'd be something the board would want to look at. Um, so we have a handful of uh, items that I should say are uh, cosmetic. Um, we have the one, a couple issues, one you've already proved, the other one Trustee Gett just mentioned as far as the deck, that's more of a, a priority because it's a liability issue. So, um, but the others I want to get in front of you and uh, bring back what we can afford, um, what can we find eligible through BDD and TIF. So. I think, uh, I've had to mention that because you told me that today about the lights. We don't have to go out there and use messy dyes and everything to put in there and worry about safety if the dye is safe for the kids because you know the kids are going to play in there and we can just have it set up in the lights and then we can remotely program in what we want what colors we want you know for whatever uh holiday it might be i think it's a great idea but cost is a big issue so i would like to mention you mentioned safety and i think that's one of the reasons these lights are so expensive because you're talking about exposed water with electricity running through them yeah, right. that people can walk up and put their hands in yep. and it has got to be up to a certain standard, and that's why these things are so expensive. Now, this well, will be this will be low voltage lights for with LEDs now, right? So, that is correct. Yes. Okay. Yeah, and I believe the price just for static white lights that come mm. on is like thirty five thousand oh, dollars. So, the colored lights are a little more expensive, but they do it will add a lot to the park. We can change it different colors for. And this will also be upgrading to 12 lights, correct? Yeah, that would be, yeah, the, the, the white lights were only six lights. Yeah. This is, will be 12 color changing lights. And like I said, once again, the expense is a safety issue. That's why they are so expensive. But if we can get it covered, I don't know if they would go with that. I know it's cosmetic, but I'll leave it up to you. <laughs> I mean, I would like, that'd be great. I think the main takeaway is that if we do decide to do it, now is the time to do it because once the concrete's back, you can probably double the price. Right. And this is only, so it's open this week. How long is it going to be open? Uh, the, as far as? Yes. Well, the, the concrete, I mean, when are they going to pour? Well, they, go ahead, Chris. Yeah, they're, they were, they're actually scheduled to pour as soon as they get a nice day now. They've got all the pins in it and everything. Um, I believe the conduit. Is, is fixed and ready. They're going to pour around this conduit. The original conduit, there were two. Um, we believe with the new lights, they'll be able to run all the lights through one and then the control through the other. So, I mean, if they're using conduit, they're going to have to have a transformer to bring it down to uh, low voltage and then run it that way. Right, it'll all be ran through the conduit down into the pit over here that controls the fountain. Okay. So, this is not an action item, this is a discussion. No, discussion. No. We, we are bringing these to your attention, and if there's a consensus that you'd like us to bring you back uh, a final cost with approval, we'll do that. Yeah, I think we pushed the pause button on the concrete, right? So. Yeah, we would have to not let them lay the well, concrete. Well, I, I would say through our, our meetings throughout the week, bring me your priority list of what you would like to see happen. If I say I can fund all these issues, what would you like to see done? And then we will we will make the proper context. Other than the overhang, right? Yeah. I mean, that we need to do no, that. No, that's, that's a difference. Yeah, I'm talking about the cosmetic. Okay. So just think about it. Bring me back a priority list or email it to me, and I'll let you know if, if we, we can find the funding. So. But we have to do the... We have to wait on the concrete if we decide to do the, to do the lights. Is that what I take from that? Um, that, no, or, I, or at I least adjust so. for it. it. It's it's going to be possible to do it now since it is open. Okay. So, are you looking for mayor? Are you looking for a consensus for us to tell him to go ahead and get a price on this or? Yes, and I'm going to take a shot and express an opinion and say, I, I think we need to do that fountain. That would be a priority. I'd like to see the sign and the painting done, but um, that, that's my own opinion. But yes, I'm looking to, for some direction from everyone on, on uh, what you'd like to do. Well, we can move forward with all of it, and if you change your mind and say, 
you know what, uh, when we put it on the agenda, if I don't think we got the mo have the money this year to do the sign, those things can. Good point. So if we if I if we found the money to fund these projects, the board would be all in favor to to do everything, correct? So one question. So in all this, is the stone sign out here included no. in any of this? No. Yeah, I was going to say just to clarify, that's the sign on no. the side over here. No. Okay. Yeah. With the messages for the board. Yeah, oh, we literally okay. take letters. And yeah. yeah. Okay. So that, We're going to go with a digital that's sign. No. Are you doing new no. Plexiglass that's not everything. digital. Yeah. That's upgrading the glass, painting it, upgrading okay. everything around it. The I think the interior of it. Uh, so it's not a digital sign though. But if you look at it, the paint on it is faded. Oh, yeah, it, it, it needs work. Yeah, yeah I, I mean, from my perspective, Chief, uh, from the, you know, from administration and, and, and you know, Trustee DeVore, if you, I mean, you're, this is your department too, but I think we, since we have the 125th coming up, we have this unique opportunity where we've already been operating on the fountain already, and we have uh, potentially, you know, since this would be a BDD expense, um, then I would say that um, we, you know, we try to make it right. This is our one time every, how old is this, 30 years? 30 uh, years old? It's 20, I think it's 22 years old. 22 years old? Yeah. Okay. There is one other thing I want to bring up. Last year I brought it up, and I wasn't too crazy about the idea because I don't think they gave much thought to it about the, pe the woodpecker needs to be refurbished, but they wanted seven thousand dollars to get a man lift and sit out in the parking lot and stretch i mean we, we should be able to find it i mean i know the last time they Repelled cut the thing off and lowered it down okay. and the uh, school did it but i mean that is pretty faded and getting pretty bad shape so my only problem is i have a hard time spending seven thousand dollars to paint a, a woodpecker you know, I, so is that a trustee get is that pretty heavy then that the wood well uh, yeah I would imagine so I mean it's uh, when they did it before they, there was a bunch of pennies and coins they had to pull out of the head for people oh. throwing down on it and everything and uh, I mean it's all wood I mean uh, Chris it's ten feet tall I believe yeah it doesn't look like from the ground that's amazing <laughs> but it, 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 I mean I understand there's Safety again, you know. I mean, you're gonna send a man. That's quite a ways up, and as an outstretch, to be stretching from the parking lot and a man lift up to there to unhook it and lower it down. I mean, as far as I know, uh, Mr. Casey only asked one person, and that was uh, Mike, no, uh, Lewis from uh, Pal. No, what was it? Uh, Mid oh, Pure Construction. Mid Chris Illinois. Lewis. Chris, yeah. Yeah, he was the only one. As far as I know, he's the only one we talked to about it. Looks good for well, uh, Trustee Get, I would ask you to get some more information on that. If, if I may, for the sake of time, I'm going to say that we're going to put all these on the agenda for the next meeting for action. And then if the board, if you have a change of mind, then you can vote against it. We're going to bring it back to you for approval. But the is timeline that? is okay. I mean, that's the only thing that I'm concerned yes. with. The timeline yes. is okay as far as the yes. concrete. Yes. Well, we'll tell them to hold off until you make a decision. I think with the conduit, what he was talking about, we're good to go. I didn't realize they ran that already. So. Okay. Okay. Uh, Trustee, got anything else under building and grounds? No, I think I pretty much covered it. So. All right. Thank you. Um, we would be at updates on various projects. Mr. Aldridge. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, still kind of exchanging design ideas about layout with the uh, vendor on that one. Uh, the equipment, again, has been ordered, so that's uh, all the equipment is ordered. Anticipate like a two-month lead time, so sometime in September, uh, we hope uh, to get the equipment and have all the design issues worked out. So uh, that's what we're at on that project. A uh, couple developments. Consultant on that on 
Thursday just for an update, but we're also preparing uh, the village's financial uh, information that will then feed the capital plan. So we're at the stage where once they receive that, we'll, we'll look at how uh, the current finances will fund improvements and then if there's anything we need to do to adjust those, those revenue sources. Uh, a couple of grants we're looking at right now. Uh, one is the ITEP, that's the Illinois Transportation Enhancement Program. Uh, they're offering that again this year, about every two years they offer that. Last time, I think regional planning applied on behalf of the town for the uh, trailhead uh, project. So, didn't receive it that time, so we're gonna uh, look at that again and see if we can uh, make that application a little bit better, just tweak it a little bit and see if we can There's also several DCEO, that's the Department of Commerce and Economic Opportunity Grants. This time, really specific to retailers and, and festivals. So, uh, might contact the chamber and some other folks and see if there's any interest in funding for festivals and we can assist with uh, that type of application if that's the case. Uh, the other grant is the HUD uh, Healthy Homes Program. That's being led by ETEC in our case um, throughout what is in the Peoria area. Um, so I, I, I'd like to at some point give you some more information about that, but we're still kind of in the application process and going back and forth with HUD on uh, specifics regarding our application. But as soon as we get all that um, uh, understood, then uh, I intend to make a more complete report specific to the heights on what they Thank you. Um, I'll let the, the board ask questions, but I'd, I'd like to ask you one. Um, could you explain, I, I know a lot of us and a lot of us in the community are a little bit impatient about the War Memorial Drive developments, not only one, but a couple. Um, the, the challenges, since that's not our road, that's a state highway and, and the e ingress and egress, can you tell us a little bit about those challenges and why that's delayed? Yeah, thank you. It's, it's kind of hard to explain, but back in 1950, I don't know. The access along there. So they can restrict commercial access and have done so. So every deed of any private property that had access, uh, the deed says there can't be any commercial access. So that what what was strange to many of us is when did we know this? Uh, and it's so old that I think uh, you know uh, we really talked to IDOT about that and went to fairly high levels with IDOT. I think we uh, they kind of are thinking about that and offered us some suggestions that they might buy as far as additional access uh, along the road. But I can appreciate that they don't want access. Sometimes it's a, a safety issue, but in some cases it just doesn't make sense uh, not to uh, have access. So you'll see out there now uh, what I call write-in, write-outs that they've been enforcing over the years, uh, things like that. But when they can, they would like to shut off the private access to war drive. And frankly, I can understand that from a, just a traffic uh, aspect. I can't always understand it from a commercial development aspect. So, so I think we, we won some small battles with that with IDOT, and hopefully we'll uh, be able to get them to change their mind. Well, and thanks for leading us through that. And uh, just a reminder to the board that your the villages and the, the community's comprehensive plan that we adopted and our and our goals and objectives here as a board was to identify opportunities on War Memorial Drive, which we did, and we brought some development there, and then we had these challenges with IDOT, and I don't I have nothing but good things to say about them, but it, it has caused some delays. So th thanks for leading us through the airplane. Yes, Trustee Weisenberg. Uh, do we have any update on uh, Route 29? Um, we do. As, oh. as someone who uh, grew up and lo on Longshore and along the road, uh, that is an incredibly dangerous road. Um, so would you take some time because I, I don't. Yeah. I, we're, we're <laughs> we met with them and we, I talked to them before and they said, soon we'll want to sit down and talk to you. So we did get, I think it was three weeks ago, uh, we set up a meeting with uh, uh, Trustee Kazam, the mayor, and myself were there. 
uh, and we're surprised that the Secretary of Transportation was also there. So, uh, as long as uh, several other high-level folks from the district and region. So, it's an important project for them, and we were happy to see that level of interest uh, in these areas. Uh, so, they're at the stage where they're, um, I think they have the, what we call the cross-section kind of worked out. The, the project's called the Narrows. And the issue is, uh, on the west side, there will be a 10-foot bike trail, mixed-use trail. So that's included in the plans. So that means the road will be widened to some extent. Uh, I think it still has the same basic cross-section. It does four lanes, bidirectional turn lanes. So uh, with that, they'll have to build retaining walls. Uh, and right now, they're trying to understand what that means to the adjacent property. So it's a fairly kind of uh, understand confidential kind of period. Right. They're trying to understand that, so they called us in and uh, basically asked for our help. So the village will uh, work with them to try to understand, you know, the impacts of the adjacent properties. And in some cases, if we know there's going to be development or proposed development there, well, maybe we can work with IDOT to make it happen at that time to make, it, right. make the access right. better. Yeah, and I understand the importance of development, but the turn lanes for like Longshore, Riverview, Popular, are those still in the work or in the plan? I, I'd have to look at the plans. To okay. I just, Typically, if there's an intersection or a signal there now, there be. Although there's not a signal or a turn lane there, and there's been a lot of deaths over the years and people get hit well, turning. Well, they're, they're certainly aware of crashes, so, uh, uh, and, and would deal with all the crashes. Uh, they they did make us aware that they intend to reconfigure the intersection at Gardner and Route 29. Can you elaborate on that? And that, that, so they'll uh, do some geometrics and improvement. I believe that's is that signalized now. So they'll they'll redo the signals and do some improvements. But without a stop um, going north on 29, right. they're they're changing that. Yeah. Correct. I don't know when I know when Senator Kaler was here. I I stressed the importance of turn lines on Route 29, I, I hope that that's still in the plan. Yeah, that... Right, right now, it's, it's uh, as I recall, it's a bi-directional turn lane, so there's a fifth lane, the lane until we will see that, in some cases, we'll transition to a turn lane, uh, or it's used as a lane for access to the property, so. Okay. So that's that's where we're at now, and it's a positive meeting, we're going to pull the side out And then something else that come, came up that I found interesting, can you explain um, they're concerned about driveways and, and the grade when they enter a, a highway, that those are challenges yeah, too. I don't want to get in too much detail on that, but that's one of their big concerns is you widen the road and, and there's a bluff on one side. Right. Well, if that driveway is steep now, it yeah. becomes steeper. Right. So, and there's standards for that. They don't, they really don't want to make things worse. And in many cases right now, it's as bad as it can be. Right. Just imagine bottoming out on your bumpers, thing like that. Yeah. So, so uh, again, that's something we'll, we like to work with. Them. Any other questions on that? One other thing I wanted to address, Mr. Mayor, I wanted to thank uh, Director Aldrich. Uh, I know you and I, uh, along with uh, Trustee Kinsam and uh, Mike Bailey, uh, uh, went out uh, and and uh, <laughs> Superintendent Chandler and uh, we all went out to uh, Normal uh, to walk around and see what their developments have done and how Mr. Aldrich had uh, been able to secure some funding uh, through various sources with a with a uh, a willing board uh, <laughs> from what I understand. Um, so I appreciate. Uh, uh, the mayor and uh, yourself taking some time to show us around a little bit out there. Yeah, and thanks for bringing that up. And so for the better part of the day, and uh, thank you to Mayor Coos over in Normal. Um, we spent the day over there um, touring their uptown area uh, and really started out with a whole lot of empty storefronts. We don't have that here, but uh, we were interested in, in finding out how they brought more people to live there and uh, made it more walkable and uh, made it more appealing. and. Um, 
Um, I knew R Wayne had an impressive uh, career over in Norma, but to see it firsthand was really with the intermodal that was brought in and uh, um, all, the, all the businesses and, and funding sources that you had to make happen. So it was an interesting day. Thank you. And, and you know, as I said there, it's, everything's different. Every community is different. So with different challenges and funding sources, things like that. So, mm -hmm. so again, I hope it was helpful and it was my, certainly my pleasure. To and Mike, you wrote up a good piece. I think you're going to disseminate that to the board uh, soon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Anyone else? I just had one update or a couple updates, Mayor, uh, briefly about the fire department's uh, <laughs> position that we discussed last meeting. Um, the position was advertised. Um, it ends um, Friday uh, for application. We've received about six applications. Uh, I anticipate the interviews will start next week or the following, um, and depending on the backgrounds. So that's kind of where I'm at. And then I will bring, I should say, the results to the board after that. Um, any questions on that? The other thing the, uh, I wanted to give the board an update on is the, the gentleman that came up last meeting regarding the habitual speeding on Toledo, I just wanted to update you. Uh, our officers were able to locate, I should say, the 90% of the problem and, uh, and w addressed it. So it was, it was a resident um, in that area. So I think that the issue has been uh, taken care of. So, but I want to give the board an update since he did come to public meeting and uh, make the complaint. Thank you. So we're miscellaneous business, and um, anything is fair game. But we talked about uh, public works and building and grounds. So anyone else uh, that didn't have a chance to report on your committees, please go ahead. Or I, I got a question for Superintendent yes. Chandler. Um, on Montclair Avenue, there's a, um, a public works, I don't know what they're called, street sign or something standing over what looks like a catch base, basin. Yeah, it's a catch basin. I spoke to that to that resident today. Okay, is that in the process of being repaired? It or? is. It is. Unfortunately, there are more than one that needs repaired. Mm -hmm. It's not the bottom of the list or anything, but we're working our way through them. They were there are quite a few of them that need rebuilt, and I understand that one is is I would say pretty soon on the list. I, okay. I did speak to her personally today okay. about that. Yeah. Any other miscellaneous? Any other committee chair want to chime in on anything? All right, Trustee Gutt. I make a motion to uh, adjourn. Is there second. a second? Second. There is a motion and a second to adjourn. All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? We are adjourned and just, uh, I think we're going to be looking at a fairly long agenda for the next meeting. Is that correct? So, yes. all right. We'll be here a little longer. Thank you.